Hello everybody and welcome back to Ace Attorney. Look at Edgeworth, he's looking at us, we're looking at him. We are both making eye contact, we are communicating, he's, he's slow blinking at me, I'm blinking back like a cat, and we're leaving him. Sorry, we have other stuff to do. <laughs> so, rightio, we need to go to uh, Adrian Andrews and confront her about all that crazy stuff. I'm actually gonna... I'm gonna do a dick move here. I'm actually gonna present... Hello? <laughs> I'm actually gonna present to um, uh, Will Powers real quick. Okay, no, he he's got nothing. Yeah, just you know, gotta gotta try everything with everything else. Uh, okay, if I recall, oh no, no 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 no, I'm not talking to you, Lotta. Bye bye bye. I think she was in God's room. I really love when um, motorbikes. Uh, loudly fart across the road. Really awesome. Great for my recording. Anyway, on guard's hotel room. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. Who is it? That's Fra oh shit. <laughs> That's Francisca von Karma. Miss von Karma. What are you doing here? Um. Well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so <laughs> you should really specify who when you're talking about his. I mean, there's not many other people it could be, but still, like, we haven't introduced the subject yet. Anyway, you've got some nerve following me around. Following you? Th that's you, Miss Von Karma! You're the one doing the following! Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard! Aw, it is, it is a little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting, little girl. What is that? I did hear that earlier when she, like, came in to fire Gumshoe, which, by the way, unfire him now. What is that? An, e <laughs> an electromagnetic receiver? I planted a tracking device on that de What? Girl, what? Is that legal? <laughs> Probably. And with this, I know that fool's every move. Why? So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it when she like entered the room with... I Like, it startled me because I thought it was the sound of the, um... The what's it called? The radio transceiver that we had. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews! Oh, are you gonna interrogate her for me? Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. What were those two talking about? <laughs> I mean, they're the same age, so maybe they were flirting. Ms. Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? More than likely she was prepping her as a witness. Well, how's it going? I guess we'll just uh, skip the nicety- What is that card you're holding? I, I didn't really pay much attention to it before. Is that like a conch shell or something? I cannot tell. Like one of those little spirally- Shell things. Okay, let's see if I remember what we have to present. Motive for murder. Why was Juan Corrida murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh. Okay. Not good at being intimate with another person. Where was the evidence for this? Yes. Take that. Okay, and we've already done all this. Okay. Get close to Mr. Corridor for this No, sorry, wrong button. I I'm using my keyboard right now, so my, uh, my, my good old button instincts aren't excellent right now. Oh yeah, the, the other obvious thing. I used, I'm using a different computer right now because the previous one had really loud keyboard and that was very annoying to edit around. In fact, I couldn't completely edit around it. But uh, I certainly tried and now we're back to normal, so, uh, Sorry about that, guys, but we're we're in the good zone now. Celeste impacts your mentor. Why do you know about Celeste? Ms. Impacts. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, she's sweating. Right before her death, she was Juan Corrida's manager. So I believe you've got close to. So I believe you got Miss. Oh my god. I believe you got close to Mr. Corridor so you could find out more about her suicide. You have a great imagination. 
You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I believe you are completely at ease with the way her suicide was res what the, the, was resolved. I am so sorry, everyone. Uh, okay, which one is it? Was her suicide note hidden? Both of these could kind of work. I'll do that one. Get a hold of yourself, huh? If you want advice on doing yourself in, I suggest asking someone, like the police. Excuse me. I mean, both of them are like... <laughs> Jesus. Both of those were like, kind of related to, well, I think you didn't like this, actually. But okay. We might die. Ms. Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? <gasps> also, hold on, I have to check something real quick. Okay, we're good. It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corridor. Juan? And, Miss Andrews, I believe you felt the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corridor. God, we still have a lot of psyche locks to go. I I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. <laughs> I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. Okay, I guess that's the point where we present the other thing. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste impacts with someone very special to you. Uh... Yes. Okay. Ms. Andrews, you... you went through it too, didn't you? <laughs> that is the goo- like, it, with, with our modern vernacular, that is such a goofy way of, like, saying that. Oh man, she's really going through it. Went through what? A suicide. <laughs> Ms. Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, and you live by yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. That's not a good sign. However, that is all just a lie. A facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. On whom you can depend on. I'm not sure about that sentence. That's... You were dependent on Ms. Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! Okay, I don't know what the... We don't really have evidence for the last one. When Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corridor of hiding Ms. Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? I mean, he probably would have destroyed it by now. If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Ms. Andrews, it seems that you have become the one most likely to want Mr. Corridor dead. Oh, shit. I guess I hadn't really put that together yet, but that's true. <laughs> me? Ms. Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she was killed her- why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Oh shit, okay, I guess we didn't need evidence for the last one. Guess we just need to really hound her into a corner and say, hey, you're a murder suspect. And I might just, uh, prosecute you despite being a defense attorney. It oh, new, new sprite. I like her hair. It's true, I am a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Oh, they're doing basically the same pose. Ms. Andrews. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. Oh, this music's really good, actually. I don't think we've heard this yet. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I, 
I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Girl, I don't! It is... it's fine. Like, look, look. You... hang on. You are 23! It's fine! You don't need to have it together at 23. My good god. And maybe you should start going back to that therapist again. Seems like there's still some issues you gotta resolve. Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corrida. Well, we don't know that. He just seems the most likely. Look, look, uh, Miss, Miss Andrews, I've been reading a lot of Detective Conan lately. <laughs> and that is a manga, like, chock full of cases like this, and... Like, there are any number of goofy gymnastic shit that could have happened to make it look like Juan Corrida was the first one to get there without him actually being the first one to get there, so... You know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of shit that could have happened. Celeste. Without her... Without her, I became scared. Everything... Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corridor to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> you know what they say! Where there's smoke, there's fire! And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they would keep the celebrity world burning. Damn. Which is kinda right. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. Still have work to do, so... Tally- <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> I understand. Oh, I have one small favour to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Ms. Andrews... If... If people found out about my weakness... I, I would sooner choose to die than live. Yeah, like... I get that. Also, like, the publicity is not great. Alright, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Also, it's crazy personal. <laughs> and super not our business. Ms. Andrews, I guess she's the always thinking type. Well, yeah, can't you see her glasses? She never says anything carelessly, it seems. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Ms. Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. Yeah, funny you should mention that, because I only just noticed it this Let's Play. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Ms. Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Did she have it before- Oh, it is kind of like a shell. Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. Well, that ain't suspicious at all. It's the calling card of the- the shell joker. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. By not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. It must be the manipulator from Ghost Trick. Remember that game, everyone? Ghost Trick Phantom Detective? Now available on the Switch? The best game in the world, available on the Switch for anyone to play? Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. On Guard in your capable hands. And also for the DS, which is easily emulated. Like I am doing now. Wink wink, nudge nudge. Uh, okay, I uh, don't really know where to go next. Oh, well thankfully there's a cutscene. Gatewater Hotel Hallway. Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. I really don't think we have. We still don't know what happened to Lotta's camera and that's... Like, almost certainly she caught something pertinent to the murder on that. So we need to find that. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all. She's been walking all over the place with me today. Seriously, get her- get, put her to bed. Put her- let her have a little nap. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. A little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no! I'm okay, really! I'm fine! I really am! Look at me do a little dance! You don't look fine to me. Well. I guess we're going back to the office. Hey man, what's up? Well, now I feel really bad for like trying to show him the fucking suicide file earlier. Uh, right. Okay. Glad that was a straightforward hint. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Ms. Andrews has a motive. You mean Ms. Impact's suicide note? Wait, shit! Phoenix! 
I just remembered, we have to solve this murder by today. Like, we, we can't just fly by the sea of the pants here. We don't have the full three days. We have to solve it perfectly on the first try or Maya's dead. You mean Ms. Impact's suicide note? And we also haven't talked to the judge. That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. A self-report, like the hit game Among Us. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Beep. Hello? This is the law office of Ryan Co. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. Do you mean your phone? <laughs> like, wh what does that mean? <laughs> Why are there so many typos in this game? M Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not come within a few feet of her this whole time. Phew. Which is why, I suppose, she is absolutely famished. Oh shit. You dickhead. Oh, what?! So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, wait! Maya! Let me hear her! Very well. Ask my- Maya, is that you? Sis! Ask my sis! Be- Maya! Maya! Damn it, he cut me off! Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? What's a sister? Come on, Phoenix. <sighs> You're a hopeless one. Oh, right, I forgot Pearl can do it as well. Um, sorry. Ah! Oh, hi! The booby lady's back. Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. Oh, that's... That's interesting! I never thought about that! <laughs> We can use Mia as a walkie-talkie, because I guess her ghost can just, like, fly between the two of them and, like, pass messages. Uh, but it wouldn't really work for Maya, unless she can talk directly to Mia, which I'm not always clear on whether she can or not. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. A kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. Why'd I read it like that? I'm glad to hear she's safe, but Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. Then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. Thank you for being so competent, Mia. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like this. Pretty smart of her. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm saying. The kidnapper. What's he like? I don't know. Can't she? Maya, quick, challenge an uh, escape artist. Chal uh, ch ch challenge? Channel an escape artist. Channel uh, someone who's really good at picking handcuff locks and also chloroforming kidnappers. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ah. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now, of course. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her... Oh, flashback? Date, question mark, time, question mark, location, question mark. Hi. One question. Hi, I need to be loved? <laughs> I'm starving. Really go for some apple pie. Oh, dude, don't even start. You know, a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't gonna kill me. I'm not gonna die. He totally is trustworthy. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Oh. If I don't do something to the door first, I don't think I'll be moving anywhere. Yeah, I figured. Like, this is the first time I think we've been in a location that we can't move from. That's really, really cool uh, game design stuff. Uh, is that a note on the floor? Huh? Some- What the fuck? Is this- Is this actually the kidnapper's calling card? Huh? Someone dropped a card here. Kinda looks like a business card? But there's no name on it. Sus? Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. Yeah, I think so too. What a strange card. Yeah, it'd have to be a super recognizable logo for that to really be useful if there's no, uh, name on it. There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. Okay, what about these barrels? What's this? It feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. My, do not get crunk right now. Now is not the time. Uh, door. Drat's locked. Hmm, but this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. What? On like a bolt door? Then click, they met. Oh, like you actually just slide. 
Like it's a screwdriver, like Phillips head shaped lock and you just turn it? That'd be pretty cool. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Yeah, I wonder. Ah, oh, that's it! The shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here! I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius! Alright, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. Click! I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here! I shouldn't keep Nick waiting, or worried. I don't think this is gonna work, Maya. I think we're about to get jump scared by Dick. What? Bruh. Let me. <laughs> let me out, please. Yeah, sure, why not? Good lord. Okie doke. March 22nd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. Look at his gay little hips! Like, his waist is tiny! My man, are you wearing a corset? What's happening? Who is this man? <laughs> Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. I mean, she's a woman. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? Hmm. Yeah. Certainly there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time, Mia. Yay! Mia, could you maybe get some larger clothes? <laughs> We're in court. I don't know if this is decent. I don't know if this is allowed. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know. Can't focus on my situation right now. Or Pearls either, <laughs> seriously. Don't, like, pass out while channeling. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. Beep, beep, beep. It's him! Beep. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well... When I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit... How shall we say... Tired. Don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. Ah! <sighs> For myself, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Oh, for me? You shouldn't have. Is it lollies? What in the world did you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial opens, even if you don't like my gift. I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Please tell me it's a bomb. Wait! Beep. The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer, dude? Who is that? Uh, uh, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, do your nose just get longer? <laughs> oh, Matt, you're a weird, you're a weird guy. You're an odd bloke. There's no one! And also, where's Edgeworth? He said he, like, he kind of hinted he'd help us, right? Is he actually... But Von Karma's prosecuting. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is not fucking ready. Is the present incapacitating Von Karma? I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Ms. Von Karma? I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor. Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. Well, no the hell it isn't. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor, Prosecutor Von Karma has, oh shit, this morning, what? Bruh, hello? This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What? Sh shot? Jesus Christ. Somehow, I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present? Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. She disappeared. This would be to your advantage. This... this is totally insane! You're telling me. Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I don't have that answer! She's alive and in stable condition. Who's this now? That's good. Phew. <laughs> You're... I thought he'd show up. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Wait, he's in the wrong place? <laughs> sir, sir, we're not gonna prosecute you for your father's death again. Your Honor. 
Due to the circumstances, Miss Franziska von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. You're not on the prosecutor's bench, though! I guess maybe he's, like, asking permission first. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, all's right with the world. Look at you. That's where you belong. That's where you're supposed to be. This is- this is enrichment for Edgeworth. Ms. Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Good god! Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The court acknowledges the prosecution! Edgeworth, Edgeworth, can you be a bro right now? Wait, actually, does he- he knows about Maya, right? I can't remember. I feel like he must do, right? Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. <laughs> the answer is that I like to be a smug bitch. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, <laughs> the question. <laughs> the answer, yes. The question, will you marry me, Phoenix Wright? Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Let's go! Oh, this case is awesome. Witness your name and occupation. My name's Dick. <laughs> My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? <laughs> After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge. No! Detective Gumshoe. The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Bruh! Be so nice to him. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. Yeah, we like it rough with Edgeworth. The answer you're struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Can you two stop making out for like two seconds? Okay, bare facts of the case. Let's go. This murder happened after the Hero Heroes Award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corredor, was found dead in this hotel room. After looking to the ca the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. <laughs> yeah, I fucking bet you thought that. At first we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. H how do you figure? <laughs> Could you elaborate? After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their rooms, sir. It's a lot of voice for me to keep track of right now. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. A lot of barely different voices. Because <laughs> I don't have the range. Alright, this murder happened after the Hero Heroes Award ceremony, sir. Hold it! Are you sure? Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Actually, that's a, for once a good question. <laughs> okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. Then at around 8 p.m. Then there was a short break. A special post ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30 minute break period. Hmm, please continue with your testimony, detective. Cool. The victim was found dead in his hotel room. Do we actually have, like... I mean... Ah. See, I'm Detective Conan mode, and, like, do we know for sure, like, that's when he died in terms of, like, from the autopsy? Because we should definitely, like, relate those two. Because it could just be that someone was, like, puppeting his little, his little costume around. It covers his face. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. <laughs> who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? She's the defendant, Matt Ongard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went and get Mr. Ongard. After visiting his room, he next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. Cool. After looking to the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. Cool. A cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Corridor was stabbed in the chest? I 
Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Excuse me! Hang on. Let me take a look at the motherfucking autopsy report. Do we have it? Oh my god, we don't have the fucking updated autopsy report. We actually don't. Shit, we're fucked. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now, a real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. I don't... see it. I don't... what bandana? Could you circle it with a big red circle? Mmm, banana. <laughs> uh, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, yes, yes, I see. His bandana said- his banana scented bandana! Then, what about the knife? What? I can barely see it! There's like- is it the same color as his skin? I don't know. It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm. We have the crafty murder on our hands here. Not like all those other idiot murderers. Okay, we actually have the autopsy report. That's great. Hang on. Shut up for a second, Gumshoe. I have to look at the upda motherfucking updated autopsy report. Uh, okay. 8.15, strangle with a scarf, then stab with a knife. I'm gonna check that time again later. Uh, wait. Let me, let me, let me check once more. Okay, yeah, he was strangled, then stabbed. After death. Okay. Uh, there's something suspicious about the empty guitar case. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. The Jabba Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? D judge, don't start. A fan really wanted the guitar and ha did the crime to get it. How's that? Terrible, Your Honor. Uh, we thought of that too, but, uh... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory, then. Well, it's not... I mean... Like, did we forget people can wear gloves and wipe fingerprints? But also your theory sucks, so let's not humor him any further. That's great news. Okay, that's gonna be useful later. We found out the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. I guess because it only had the victim's prints on it? What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The case had nothing to do with the case. The guitar wasn't at the, ga the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corrida, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put his guitar inside the case? Bruh, he fucked up big time. Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. Hmm... So that guitar case was empty before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why, then, did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. He sure is, and we love to see it. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Why rest on guard? That is the question. Matt on guard and Juan Corridor were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's more of enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jam and Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja costume and found Mr. On Guard's Hakama. I bet we're gonna have to explain what Hakama are again. <laughs> the defendant's fingerprints were also over the knife. Have we seen that knife before? It's gold. I bet it's from like a cutlery set or something. The defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Alright. Well, I guess we have a receipt. So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Knife added to the court record. Wait, so... hang on. So the fingerprints were, like... bloody? That is pretty damning. Okay, victim's blood... gate water is engraved. So it's, like, from the hotel? Are you sure he bought it? And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. Is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and um, we know the blood in it is the victim's blood, sir. What? I mean, it's not super concerning. Like, it came from his chest, so someone probably just 
Cut it off. Well, this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. You smug bitch. Ready to give in, right? Hm. I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. I'll find your hole. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you can press as hard as you like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. It's impossible with these two. Gah. All right. Let's start the questioning. They're huge rivals with each other. I mean, we don't really need to press this, but might as well. But in terms of popularity, Mr. On Guard won, did he not? Yeah, but you know what's ironic, pal. Juan Cory was always one step behind Mr. On Guard and everything. Kind of like a reverse Tango from uh, Ghost Trick. <laughs> Everyone's favorite game. Play that game. <laughs> this year, it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Corridor lost the Grand Prix in the end. That is too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. Got something you want to say, Edgeworth? Got an opinion on this? Alright. Wait just one second here. Mr. On Guard was being Mr. Corridor in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Whoa, that's crazy, I never thought of that. Hmm, yes, I quite agree. Well, Detective, uh, it's not... Well, uh, I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. <laughs> oh, I missed that soundbite. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Miles! You are on first... You're in trouble. Go to your room, young man. Stop bullying him. Uh, th no, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Th that's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. <laughs> oh, no, he got da uh, No! He got downgraded to pension talks rather than salary talks. Now, now, detective, let's continue with the testimony. <laughs> no, not my poor pension too. Oh. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. Um, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? It's so dark in here! Hello? As for evidence, there's the Gem and Ninja's button. Okay. Do you have any proof that button belonged to the victim? Huh? I don't get you, pal. Oh, uh, let me put it this way. He, he kind of put it in the most simple way he could have. I'm asking if you... I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off of the Gemma Ninja's costume. By the way, off of is a huge pet peeve, I hate it. Huh? But can't you tell just by looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it! Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir! Oh my god, he's so wet beast today. Alright, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it! They're a perfect match, pal! Yo. Yeah. I don't even know how to read that. <laughs> That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. Yeah, he sure doesn't. He'd be really good at, uh, Taiko no Tatsujin. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corridor. And then we did a search in the mall. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Who are you looking at? Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? I don't play tricks. God, okay, so that dialogue option was basically just for Edgeworth to dunk on us. Awesome. Thanks, good game. <laughs> oh, that's completely unironic, by the way. I love this game. How are the fingerprints arranged on the knife, except for when it's big top? Huh? What do you mean, pal? Yeah, what kind of grip? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Yeah, I'm saying! See, Detective Conan helps me. Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. 
Bro, are you shitting me? I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. Including the blade? There is no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Well, that's a bit sus. So is the defend the owner of this knife, then? Yeah, that's weird. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Okay, yeah, that's weird, though. There is no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't just some pocket knife. It's not really useful for anything, and you can't just walk around with it either. Yet, yeah, what the fuck is it? Ah, well, this is not good. Phoenix! Follow that line of questioning! What is the knife for? What is it? Is it for a cutlery set? Is it, like, just a decorative knife? What's happening? If the prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder, we're done for. Phoenix. Yeah? <laughs> There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully, before it's too late. Button covered in the victim's blood, and the knife with on guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. This system sucks. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay, Phoenix? Not to worry, because the prosecution's weakness is me! And I'm gonna look at the evidence real quick. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be relevant for a little while. Okay, the Nickel Samurai... That was... Okay, that's Mad on Guard. He had something to confess after the post ceremony stage show. Uh, we don't know anything about that yet. That's not useful yet. I don't think we're really gonna be talking about this for a little while. Some water, but only on top of the lid. Bears Corridor's fingerprints. Okay. No sign it's been drank. I'm not sure about that. Um... Yeah, it does look like it was ripped... from it. <sighs> this is tricky. It looks... There's definitely the button... Where'd the knife go? It went on top of the button? It's... I can see the knife there. But... Uh... Strangle the scarf and stab with a knife. Did we find the scarf? Uh... Gate water is engraved. Ah, uh, shit. I have no idea. I'm gonna say first. Oh wait, I haven't checked this yet. Okay. Alright. This, this is the part where we randomly start objecting, because I honestly don't know. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, but Phoenix is asking all the wrong questions, and I don't really know what line of logic he's going to follow once I start presenting things. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. It's ripped off the ninja costume as found in his Hakama. And that is the ninja costume he's wearing, right? It's ripped off the costume. It's so deliberate, though! Like, what's the point? Oh, wait, is the knife, like, in the button? No, there's nothing- yeah, okay. It's- it's so hard to tell with such low-res pictures. His fingerprints were also all over the knife. Um... Uh... Okay... I guess... Hmm... Defendant bought the knife for the crime. But it says gate water on it. I'm gonna try that. Yeah! Okay, sweet. Maybe I am overthinking it. Wait a second. What? So the basis of your argument is that this is a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. I'm- yeah, okay! Uh-huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> it has Gabe Water seal set into the handle. Gabe Water? I think I heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gabe Water Hotel. My friend. Uh-oh. <laughs> Gumshoe! Oh my god, you're so dumb, I love you. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not prevented! I'm a good lawyer. Yes, that is very true. 
This is a very big, uh... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? You're scaring me. I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? <laughs> oh, I love that sprite. Oh my god, the theme- is this like Edgeworth's theme song now? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. H how so? Oh, you're gonna talk about the confession? I admit, this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't- oh. Oh, <laughs> I'm taking him home. He is outdoors in the rain in a cardboard box. They kicked him out. They didn't want him. The question is... Where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Corridor's room. <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. That being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. Oh yeah! You are observant! And you know what, I would- like, okay, first of all, I was right. Second of all, if I was allowed to see all the evidence the same as the prosecution, I also would have drawn that connection. There is a knife and fork on the table. Then, uh, where in the world did this knife come from? There, doofus. If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Man on Guard. Damn, he's going Miles Edgeworth investigations on us. Oh shit! Yeah, there's a knife missing! Or is that like a... Like, you can't see my mouse, but is there like a little, uh... Like, on the plate with only a fork, is there like a... The head of a knife broken off there? Especially what was on top of his table. Are we gonna zoom? Enhance? There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? Yeah, like, do you, do you see what I mean? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Man on Guard's knife was missing. Hold on, Edgeworth. This is Franziska's case. What were you doing investigating? And why are you talking about it like you led the investigation? You did not. Mr. On Guard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Dinner. <laughs> dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. You didn't prove shit. There's still so much. Like, it would be so easy to frame someone by saying, look, I took a knife from your room and the knife missing. Whoa. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. Show-stopping. Never seen before. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps and I just walked headlong into it. Shit. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honest time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Oh, he's, he's totally asking me to present Adrian Andrews' thing. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence the court hasn't seen yet. You know, the thing he just said, Phoenix. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, w well... Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If he answer with something wrong here, a gavel of his will be ringing out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to the court? I totally do, that's the answer, but like... Adrian Andrews, there's one, one piece of evidence that catches my attention. I'm going to save real quick. I'm scared. Tip, I'm so frightened. I'm so very frightened. I mean, right? We haven't looked at the map yet, but <laughs> one piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court is yet to see. Mr. Wright. I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one block. What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, curtains for all four of us. Why'd I say all four of us? Oh, good god! I'm saving again! That is scary! They've never done that before! They really are raising the stakes in this case, huh? 
like gameplay wise, I'm really feeling the difference. Okay. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Okay. Um. Uh. Uh. Not that. Well, you see, I'm being blackmailed. Um. Uh. I don't think it's that. It could be this? I'll try it. Uh, I think this is a no. Sorry, right? but this time your bluffing steered you wrong. I can see nothing strange about this piece of evidence. Shit. Wait! I am a man of my word, Mr. Wright. Fuck. Aw, oh, dude, Maya's fucking dead. That's enough. This court sees no reason for fur to further prolong this trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. The case is extremely clear. I say no I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. This court finds the defendant, Matt on guard. Edgeworth, couldn't you have gone a little easier on me? The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. Great. That is all. This court is adjourned. Why is he all gay like that? Well, that's not great. At least we don't see the aftermath of Maya fucking dying. Okay. Uh, alright, alright, alright. I'm trying to, like, soften the blow, because I, I don't want to, like... Uh, it's the drink. Uh, surely, right? Oh, bruh, really? Okay. All right, sorry, everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Actually, you know what? We're gonna end this episode here, um, because it's probably gonna take a lot of trial and error. <laughs> trial, trial and error. Er the error, the error of doing the trial. The trial was the error. The error was doing the trial. Do you get it? But uh, I'll I'll figure out what to do off screen and uh, in the next episode. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.